Okay, I've got something for you. The new parts have been fitted for the car. The simulation numbers are good, so look forward to your feedback. Check out the details. Cheers for that, Chris. I see you going over to that hospitality suite over there to get a Bev now that you've given me my gearbox durability and as well the other durability we were working on, which is the MG UK, meaning that uh, those two parts aren't going to get worn out as quickly. It'll flip over to the MG UK in just a minute there. There it is, because we are wearing those out by running in the rich mixture. Welcome back to F1 2017 career mode. This is part number 16, the Japanese Grand Prix, the home Grand Prix of Honda, funnily enough. So, you know, it's going to be a, an important one for us here because we've got to give the engine suppliers home Grand Prix a good result, you know, and let's, let's not do a Stoffel Van Dorn from the uh, from the real life Grand Prix where he's like, yeah, corners, car feels great, but uh, yeah, very similar on the straights to my, uh, to my GP2 car, so, or low-key savage Stoffel Van Dorn, but, you know, regular stuff on Friday, just putting in the work, putting in the time. Um, yeah, I've, I think I've spoke about it before, where I now intend to just bank all of my resource points that I'm going to get for the rest of this season, um, and I'm going to spend them after the final race, after we've got our bonus, to mean that we do like a big... Uh, like a big winter package, like winter, winter testing almost. So I think of it as like, you know, the uh, winter session. But anyway, we're on to qualifying now. This is uh, my second run. Uh, first run didn't go so well. I don't feel as if I was aggressive enough in some of the corners. And Suzuka's been really reprofiled this year. So, you know, you've actually got a lot of the camber on the corners. And it's great to just throw this car in, especially the Degners are now really good to drive this year. Because uh, I never really enjoyed Suzuka, but but this time it's up there. It's like top three track to drive on the game after, you know, the uh, the time I put in. But anyway, we now come through. We're into the final chicane. Got the wheel on the grass a little bit. Unsettled it through the first part of the chicane. But coming through. Better exit now. first lap. It's about seven tenths up. Where's it going to put us? We were in the drop zone. And sixteenth. So, not a good result. Not a uh, not a good result for us. 16th place, objective failed. Um, yeah, I just can't. I'm not a one lap pace guy. I can't get it done over one lap, but I can in the race, and that's where we earn our points. So uh, yeah, the Japanese Grand Prix, 27 laps of one of my new favourite circuits to drive on the calendar. Let's see what we can do for Honda. And all this will be happening under the watchful eye of Anthony Davidson, who joins me for today's race. And assuming the weather holds, where do you expect to see the action unfolding today, Ant? Well, most of the time, passing here is limited very much into the final chicane, or maybe down into turn one if you get a good run and some assistance from DRS. But if we're lucky, we might see a bit of bravery into the hairpin, a place that Kamui Kobayashi certainly made his own in the 2010 Grand Prix on his way to a very impressive seventh place. And as you say, Crofty, this is all assuming that the conditions hold out. We know how quickly the clouds can come in here at Suzuka, and if they do, all bets will be off. This is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix. Let's give them a race worth watching. So Jeff clearly noting as well that it is our engine supplier's home Grand Prix. Uh, we've actually gained a couple of places on the grid, so we're starting 14th due to some engine penalties. Um, so that's immediately bumped us up. We're slightly higher. Uh, we're going to go for the one stop because the one stop is the best strategy for me. Um, just as little pit stops as I have to make so I can avoid uh, losing as much time as possible because, you know, I like to be, I like to be a defensive driver. Um, and it's about defending the, uh, defending the track position. As mentioned, it can be fairly difficult to overtake around Suzuka, especially with the long flowing corners, makes it difficult to follow other cars. So um, it'll be difficult for us because we've got the run out of spoon, a long old straight, 130R, which is flat. Um, so we'll be defending into the hairpin and more than likely also into turn one. So they're sort of areas that we're going to have to look out for. But I'm confident of a good result. It's going to be tricky down into turn one as it's, you know, it is fairly fast. And we're going to have a lot of Formula One cars charging in there to try and get as many positions as possible. But it's going to be about the hairpin on the opening lap to see if we can make up any sort of positions as we pull up onto the grid. I've noticed this McLaren makes, it's like... It's like just nuts and bolts in a blender is the noise that it makes as it sits idle. But regardless, we have five red lights for the Japanese Grand Prix. The lights are out and we are 
underway, not getting the best of starts. Felipe Massa on our left is getting a good run. He's past us. Marcus Eriksson is having a look around the outside. We're going to be cautious in so on. The field bunches up. We've got cars running wide. Hulkenberg going very wide there. We just avoided uh, Danny Kvyat in the Toro Rosso. Actually bangs tyres with us now as we head up towards the Senna S's as we've got Kvyat. He's stuck up behind Grosjean. Can we hold it around the outside? Yes, we can. So we're past Kvyat around the outside through the S section, up through the Dunlop curve now, trying to stay out of the dirty air of Grosjean as much as possible. And we've gained a couple of positions off the start as we go through the Degners for the first time. Again, just taking it a little bit easy, keeping an eye on what everyone else is doing. Don't want to run into the back and lose a bit of our front wing this early in the race as we now make it up to the hairpin. Grosjean moving slowly. We're down the inside of the Haas car. That puts it in 11th and on the fringe of the points as we've got Sergio Perez just ahead of us there in that Force India. And we know that he's going to be pretty quick down that back straight with that Mercedes power. But we're going to sit in the slipstream, see what we can do as we follow him now through the spoon curve. And we go out quite wide, missing the apex, but it means we get a, no a tight exit. We can sit in the slipstream of the Mercedes-powered car, and we're not, we're not losing him. You know, we're actually pulling in. We're gaining a little bit. We're not going to be close enough to try and make a ballsy move into 130 yard, but we're going to follow him through and can we look to make a move into the chicane coming from a long way back Perez kept an eye on his mirrors and thankfully well, I say thankfully he left us the room but then he came barging in through to the second part of the chicane I'm not too sure if that's going to have done any damage to his front wing but initially he left us room and then he decided that he was going to try and punt us out of the way but we've now got a uh, Williams of Massa trying to come round the outside of he was successful in passing Perez but then not successful in getting past me and then I've gone wide come back on the track and we've made contact with the Williams it's been really scrappy at the start of the second lap so we need to, to settle down and get into a bit of a rhythm here thankfully that's exactly what I did and I was able to get my head down um, and we're of course up into 10th place and I started closing in not not quickly but you know closing in on the hass of Kevin Magnussen while pulling away uh, from the cars behind us of course Perez on those medium tires behind he's going to run long whereas a lot of the cars ahead of me you're going to expect to be on the soft or the super soft tires yellow flag strolls dropped it in his Williams and I nearly drop it on the curb while trying to go past him I think he was going side by side yes he was on this replay he's going side by side with one of the Red Bulls he's down the inside oh and he's that's an unfortunate incident he's wheel good just got a little bit caught on the uh, on the rear tire of the uh, of the Rebel, and they got creamed into. I think that must have been Sergio Perez of the Force Index. That car was behind us, and um, that incident did indeed bring out the safety car, uh, which probably won't surprise anyone due to the fact that I mean, if he had just spun and got going, um, he would have been fine. So Bottas comes out of the pits, and then Magnussen just—I'm not too sure what Magnussen did. He got completely all locked up, and um, so that gave us a free position, which was pretty nice. But. Um, yeah, safety car called out for that incident with uh, with Stroll, so he's going to have dropped down the field. That was only out for a couple of laps. It's now lap eight, and we've got all the cars ahead of us are on super soft tyres, except Bottas. So Bottas is in a fantastic position for this race right now. No one dives into the pits off the end of the safety car. We're racing once again. We saved up a nice bit of fuel, and we're really looking at our mirrors more than we're looking at the cars ahead, because Grosjean is down our inside into turn one with that Ferrari power. Can he make a move? We lift off. Grosjean goes wide. We send it back down the inside of the next corner. And that's us retaining our eighth position. And up ahead of us is Max Verstappen, who appears to be dropping back a little bit. We cut to a few laps later. Uh, cars ahead, because they are running the super soft tyres, have made pit stops. Verstappen now goes in. He was at third place. Raikkonen looks to have been in the pits as well. So it's now Bottas. We pick up second place on our soft tyres. We're going to do a few more laps on these. We now cut to the end of lap 13. And the intention is to come in uh, relatively soon. We may even be bringing in on the end of this lap. Yes, we are. So Grosjean is going to inherit second place uh, from us on those medium tyres. And I think the cars now going past are all on mediums. Yep, Grosjean, Kvyat and Hulkenberg. All medium tyre runners. So they're going to go past us and run quite high in this Grand Prix considering uh, where their teams are. But we now fit the mediums. Um, and we're going to run to the end of the race. Unfortunately, the next big old gaggle of cars of the top runners on super softs and then, you know, uh, the slowest guys on mediums has gone past us. So we uh, come out of the pits in 15th place as Max Verstappen. I'm not too sure what's happened to him this afternoon because he was ahead of us. And he must have had just issue after issue after issue. He's now down in 19th and on super softs. 
uh, which isn't too bad because what I'm going to do is Verstappen's going to be quick. I'm going to latch onto the back, use him as a bit of tow, and he can pull me up to the group of cars ahead. And come lap 16, that's exactly what he's done. We're back in the points. We're in 10th. Magnussen is back ahead of us, so clearly he didn't retire from the Grand Prix of any kind of issues. I don't know what his problem was, but we're trying to follow through the center S's. Of course, Verstappen's going to want to get through, but once he gets through, he's immediately going to get shown the blue flags due to technically being a lap down. In fact, they're showing him the blue flags for me right now, but I'm trying to catch onto the back. I'm just too far back from the train ahead of me, but we get a good run out of Degna 2. Verstappen pulls out the way, so he's not going to be an issue going into the hairpin. Magnussen's really slow. It's sent it down the inside. Ocon's locked up. We're going to go try down the inside of the Force India. Ocon with the wider line, able to get better acceleration, however, and even, you know, he must have... I don't know how we managed to get that car turned in after locking the brakes, but he did. Anyway, Ocon's now scrapping with the car up ahead of him. I think it's Toro Rosso. It is indeed Carlos Sainz. They've gone really slow through 130R. That made Ocon susceptible to a move into the chicane. And again, for the second time in this Grand Prix, a Force India has rammed into me while I'm trying to go through that chicane. Ocon gets a position back. Loads of cars dive into the pits. We're now battling for sixth position. And we've got Carlos Sainz trying to make a move. No, sorry. The Carlos Sainz in the pits. That's Max Verstappen trying to go around our outside but we're now in a position where we're battling Ocon he did make a pit stop uh, a couple of laps later so I didn't have to worry about him no sorry I beg your pardon Ocon got away from us and he passed Marcus Ericsson so Ericsson then made a pit stop we then get back past Max Verstappen I'm not too sure what happened on lap 17 for that to have happened but anyway that is what happened and we're now up into fifth place chasing down Esteban Ocon if we can catch him. And that comes to the end of lap 18. I'm starting to lose a bit of grip in these medium tyres. They're not giving me the purchase that I need them to. To get me to the end of this race. But uh, Ocon dives in. And we've now got Danny Kvyat for company up behind us on soft tyres. He's been really fast since he fitted those tyres. He's now going to try and make a move round there outside into turn one. He's just not close enough. He carried a lot of commitment through the, uh, through the first corner. But unable to get through. Just sort of ran out of road. And he's going to keep trying as we come on to the start of lap 20. We're actually up into third place now. So this is for a podium position. Kvyat gets a much better run this time around. Can we hold it down the inside? Kvyat gets ahead of us. But thankfully we make a measured approach and send it down the inside for turn two. And that's Vettel setting the first lap. So even Sebastian Vettel is somewhere behind us on the circuit. So the one stop once again proving to be the better strategy. Um, and starting on the softer tyre was beneficial, but now everyone around us is running on a compound softer. There's Danny Kvyat now trying to line us up for a move through 130R of all places. We hold it round the outside of the Toro Rosso driver, but we get ourselves out of position. Grass on our tyres, trying to get it slowed down into the chicane. And I don't know why the car's getting so unsettled into there. Because it's just not having a good... Uh, flow through the first part of the chicane. I'm getting out of position for the second part as Danny Kvyat now goes to make another move round the outside into turn one. Kvyat gets completely past us this time around with DRS. Blocks off the inside line. I figure that's fine. We're going to go right around the outside of the Toro Rosso. Round the outside of turn two. He's trying to make a move through the center S's but no, it's a one-way street through here, Danny Kvyat. And we defend second place in the Japanese Grand Prix with the laps are just ticking down now but unfortunately our squabbling over this position is allowing the cars behind to catch us as Kvyat tries 130R again he got a better run but he squeezed himself too much on the apex I was able to hold it flat fully round the outside and once again keeping the position but look more cars a bit of a train now is looking like it's going to be forming up behind my car and it's going to be a much more defensive drive to the end of this Grand Prix as we head towards lap, uh, turn one again on lap 23. Kvyat once again up ahead of us. Can he make the move stick this time around? No, not quite. You would think the AI would realise the error of their ways. Uh, but now here we go. We've got Danny Kvyat what, towards 130 once again. But we've got a look in the mirror. It's going to be three wide. Hamilton on the inside. There was contact made there. Through 130 There's more contact again. Danny Kvyat's round. Danny Kvyat in the Toro Rosso has spun. And I'm not too sure what's happened there. Let's try and have a look at a replay if we can. So we were going, look, three wide. And my car moved violently over to the left. That wasn't me with any kind of steering input. And Danny Kvyat, poor guy, sandwiched between the McLaren and the Mercedes. I think he made contact with me. Yeah, look, you can see the contact there. And then he's trying to turn, but there's a Mercedes there. And I still, I have no idea how he's the one who came off worse from that. Um, you would have expected it to have been Lewis Hamilton. Speaking of Hamilton, we can't take a breather after that because Hamilton is going to be having a run at us 
into turn one as we head towards and Hamilton's going to get past. He's gone steaming ahead. We're going to try and make a move down the inside. Hamilton's in a faster car. He's going to try and hold it around the outside if he can. We bang tyres and Hamilton, un unfortunately, we weren't able to uh, keep our strategy in play of letting the car go through in turn one to dive up the inside of two. The Mercedes just that little bit too fast for us for that strategy to work off, but... Hamilton kept his foot in. He's on much fresher tyres than us in a faster car. So he's through up into second. We're now defending third against Nico Hulkenberg, who tries to make a move through 130R and then tries to swipe across. We bang tyres. He holds it around the outside of the chicane, though. Hulkenberg was the first guy to be able to do that to me, actually. But he tries to make the move. Unfortunately, he's not successful. But that train behind him is going bigger and bigger as the laps tick down and down. We've got three laps to go if we include the one that we are on in the Japanese Grand Prix and it's now a matter of this this is it you know it's pretty much single file for most of the lap until we get to the spoon curve then these guys sit in our slipstream and they're still faster than us in a straight line so when it comes to 130R Hulkenberg's down the inside we go to the outside we hold it once again round the outside but now we go into the chicane Hulkenberg's still there on our outside leaving the space cut him off on the second part of it and Hulkenberg unable to get through on that occasion as now we go on to the next lap penultimate lap of the Japanese Grand Prix Hulkenberg's going to give it another go another try the Ferrari is now up behind and he tries to make it three wide Hulkenberg's got got completely past us there and he comes across he swipes violently into our side damages our front wing I'm going to send it down the inside break way too late into the chicane we hold the position but um, now we're carrying the front wing damage we come into the final lap of the Japanese Grand Prix, Kimi Raikkonen on super soft tyres has now got past Hulkenberg and he's going to be taking a charge at us into turn one if he can. We're going to try and hold it round the outside. No, we can't with our front wing damage. We can't get the car turned in. I tried to hold it flat and the car just didn't stick. I had to lift. So unfortunately, Raikkonen with once again a final lap dive on turn one. And we're still defending from Roman Grosjean. We're not even got fourth place secured as of yet. Grosjean, our rival, gets past us, squeezing himself at 130R. We have to go to the outside for avoiding action. Otherwise, it would have been a huge crash between the Haas and the McLaren. But in Honda's home Grand Prix, we're going to bring it home. Front wing damage and all after a, pr a pretty scrappy race, in all fairness, with a lot of, you know, wheel banging. It's fourth place, though. And Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today. Tell me, Ant, what was the key to this success? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bunched up. And here are our podium drivers today after that excellent race. They've excelled here as they so often do, and it's a well-deserved victory. Mercedes then are on top today. So there you have the Japanese Grand Prix. We get fourth place coming from 14th to first. And it looks as if the one stop proved to be the strategy's gone as Grosjean and Hulkenberg uh, both had a successful race as well. But this race weekend was dominated by Valtteri Bottas. He timed his first pit stop to absolute perfection under the safety car in 51 seconds. You know, usually it's Hamilton 51 seconds ahead of Bottas. But yeah, he, he pulled something out of his ass this weekend. But fourth place, crucial points, especially because we are battling uh, Grosjean in the drivers we're now 12 points ahead of him um, as we now come into sort of like the final few races of the season um, you know only four rounds left to go so it's um, it's going to come down to the wire I think uh, because as we saw in Malaysia our car doesn't always do these results if we have to do the same amount of stops as the AI then we're in danger of leaking uh, a lot of points um, but thankfully we're also uh, only eight points behind Haas in the constructors and I'm, I'm eyeing I'd say I'm mine sixth, but if we can if we can keep up the results and if Alonso can pick himself up, fifth place is on the cards. It genuinely is. Um, 21 points of Force India score a bit more consistently than Williams and Haas, but yeah, it's. I mean, we're not going to be developing the car, so it's going to be a big push for us, um, and it will be a struggle. But I get the feeling that the 
the time we spend not developing the car at the end of this season will be to our benefit at the start of next season, um, which is, of course, where big updates are going to come. But, yeah, you can see we're losing the rivalry against Grosjean um, at this exact moment uh, due to the fact he had a faster lap. But the teams, look look at this. We, if, if they give us some offers at the end of this season, we could be on for some interesting prospects. Um, you know, even Mercedes and, and Ferrari have been impressed with me recently. But, guys, that has been the Japanese Grand Prix and part 16 of F1 2017 career mode season one. Uh, I know that, I, like, it's, it's funny. I put the first seven parts out, like, in a, in a week. And then since then, I've put out nine parts in two months. Um, so it's it's not been great for me. Uh, and I can only offer my apologies. I've, I've had, like, I had four days off work to be able to get those first seven parts done. And it's just been time management. He's, he's not one of my best abilities, unfortunately. But aside from that... Uh, yeah, USA. Um, it's funny as well because when I record USA, I'm two patches later. These are recorded on 1.6, I believe, and I think the console version is now at 1.8 or 1.9. So, few few patches later, few few patches later. But um, yeah. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment any feedback down below. Subscribe to be notified about the content coming to the channel, and I will see you next time.